but also to get the contacts and the friendships which I'm hearing from this conference can be lifelong friendships, long-lasting <coughs> friendships. The DDN organisation, it's clear to me, it's more than a magazine, it's more than a series of events such as this one. The DDN community, it's a family. There's a family of people here who, obviously for the time I've spent with folk, long-lasting, close relationships, specialist knowledge, lived experience, lots of support, lots of success, lots of tough times as well. And what is your motivation for working with people that, that um, have issues um, with uh, drugs and alcohol, related issues and various areas of social deprivation? Is it to actually help them? To really actually help them or is it to help yourself? I learned, someone said to me, someone, someone very, very wise said to me when I, when I first went to rehab, I get the help that I need if I help somebody else. And for somebody like me who is a very, very dedicated, selfish person, it's actually helped me, helped me a great deal. And also my, my friends too. When I tell people I've had hepatitis C, they say to me, first thing, oh, are you a drug addict or were you a drug addict? Do you think that's helpful? No, it's bollocks. Really? Okay. And I can use that. That's not swearing, by the way, because the Sex Pistols have got it on the front of their album. <laughs> <laughs> that was proved in court, that wasn't swearing. Anyone that may have an issue with hepatitis C, we call them a patient. We don't call them a service user, or a drug addict, or an addict in recovery. Because as soon as I started to see myself as a patient, I started to see myself in the community more with everybody else. I started to leave that tag behind. So I'm here to talk about a group of individuals from Tottenham. Bubik, bring unity back in the community. Engaging with communities to create inclusion and cohesion. Addiction and a mental fight with for the four-hour business. So one of the things that we did, right, we sat down together and said, you know what, when we was out there using drugs, what could have helped us or was in place that prevented us from using drugs. So what we did, came together, we decided to put things in place, little gaps. So we'd bring the service to uh, the individuals out there, yeah? Because I always say, it's not that those guys or individuals are taking drugs or are bad people. Tra something trauma is happening in this help. I, I say, <coughs> they've got on a train and forgotten how to get off. We walk on the street, we go and meet people, we have a van, and because I say to you, you know, <coughs> the community, most of the individuals that uh, work for a beauty have come from volunteers or ex drug users. And you've got to realise I came from a community where I mashed up my community. I had an excessive drug smoke, so my community paid the price. So now, as I said, I've had substance misuse for a very long time. I've also been in recovery. And my community <coughs> has embraced that organisation. So, in the sense where we get minibuses, we get donations, we get a lot of stuff. So, when we got an average, we fully are. 